Hi everyone, this is Marcus, the Gravelholic, and welcome to Learn with Gravelholic. This week we'll be talking to Cynthia. She is also known as the Watt Wagon, an amazing, inspirational person that you will love to listen to. So, here are some of the things that we will be talking about today. There's, when I'm in the middle of an ultra and I'm like, I could go for some pavement. <laughs> Maybe a really easy gravel road right now would be nice instead of the side of this mountain. But, you know. Yeah, Jeroboam was, I was on this super secret bike and I was like, gosh, this is really cool. But like, I can't really take too many photos of the bike, you know. I was in Chile for Cross Andes. I needed like pizza and french fries. And so I went and tried to buy pizza and french fries at this shop and they were taking forever and they finally handed me what was just french fries and i didn't get the pizza and i actually had like a, a pretty much a mental breakdown and now let's get on with the full interview hello cynthia how are you doing today hi i'm good uh it is december and cold here in um the dc area but the sun is out today so i was just I'm, gonna uh, ask you where are yeah. you right now because i know that you've been traveling back and forth a whole, a whole lot lately right yeah um so i live i've been living in virginia um which is where washington like butt, butts up against um washington dc uh for the last like most most of my life i've lived in this state i'm actually getting ready to move though um i'm moving to bentonville arkansas which is Ooh. like a hot spot for cycling exactly. in the u.s right now so yeah i'm moving in the next couple months there and is the cycling the reason why you move there um yes i'm i'm trying i'm looking for like a new place to live and you know it's kind of like a place where you can be in a little bit of a city and there's a lot of art and it's a you know there's a city vibe and then within mm -hmm. five minutes you can leave and be on gravel roads or just be away in the in the like not wilderness but you know like gravel um there are tons of trails there it's just a very good place for riding bikes it's it is a lot um, prettier than I thought it was going to be because when oh, I was nice. when I went there for the first time, I was like, oh, I don't know what this place is going to be. But yeah, so, um, I don't I don't I don't know too much about the Bentonville or mm -hmm. many of the American places where you have all these gravel races. But mm -hmm. since I'm European and I, I relate to gravel when I relate to gravel, I relate to my Scandinavian kind of gravel, which is mm -hmm. super fine grained. It's hard mm -hmm. packed. Um, mm -hmm. And, but it, it, as I understand, it's very different in the U.S., right? So, what, what's the gravel like in or in around Bentonville? Is it chunky? Is it like two tracks, or is, what kind of gravel is there? It does. It definitely changes depending on where you are. But it's right around that area in northwest Arkansas where Bentonville is. It's very chunky. The rocks are super sharp, and so yeah, your potential for flats is much higher. Um, there's a couple gravel races that happen there and close by. And, and I think the gravel actually, it does really change depending on how far away you are from Bentonville, but, um, okay. but yeah, it's more, uh, it's more chunky. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. More fun for might... me. I like that. I'm into, I'm into it to be more technical and more chunky and harder. So you um, like that better? I love it. Anything technical is I'm uh, sign me up. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. I'm, mm -hmm. Then I, I think I'm on the other side of the spectrum. I like mm. it smooth. I like it fast. I like it mm. like that. But <clears throat> so, I mean, there's but... a time and a place for smooth, fast gravel. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. There's when I'm in the middle of an ultra and I'm like, I could go for some pavement. <laughs> Maybe a really easy gravel road right now would be nice instead of the side of this mountain. But, you know. Yeah. <laughs> And that, that kind of brings me to the, my next question, uh, the chunkiness. I saw that you now got the new, and that's actually one of the reasons why I don't know you. I never met you. We mm. only texted on Instagram. Uh, but we have this uh, this brand ambassadorship and sponsorship in between mm -hmm. us, right, with 3P. Yeah. And um, I saw that you now got the new Extrema. How, yeah. how is it? I know you, I didn't talk to anyone about this. How it is to ride? Do you have the nine, 29 year, 29 or something there? Um, so I had, yeah, 700 C rims. Um, I forget what the internal rim width on the uh -huh. Hunt Limitless 42 Adventures I have. I want to say oh, they're pretty wide, but um, I do have 2.25 tires Ooh. on there, and I rode it actually when I was in Italy for Jeroboam. They had a frame for me. They built up a bike for me to ride. It was the same one that I'm now on. So that's why you was... didn't share any pictures and anything. <laughs> about yeah, yeah. Jeroboam was. I was on this super <laughs> secret bike, and I was like, "Gosh, this is really cool." But like, I can't really take too many photos of the bike, you know. Um, so 
yeah, I got to ride it there and it's really chunky there. It's super techie terrain where they did the loop. Uh, Nicolo, the the Corta, race right? on. yeah, the Francia Corta race. Uh, yeah. Um, Nico yep. who puts the race on, he is a fellow ultra racer and loves technical, chunky, hard terrain. So yeah, he made a, he made a pretty, pretty challenging route and yeah. I got to ride it on that. So it was cool for my first ride to experience it gobbles up rocks. Like it is cool. Yeah. It's really, really I, wonderful. I, yeah, that's what I heard as well about the Fancha Corta one. It's, it's it's pretty gnarly, and there's some some hiker bike sections and stuff like that as well. I I, I was there uh, in was it April or May? I don't remember now. In Rimini uh, to oh, do the Fancha mm-hmm. Corta there. Oh, and nice. It was okay. Absolutely stunning with the white mm. gravel roads and stuff like that. I, mm-hmm. Oh mm. my god, I want to go back. <laughs> one of my teammates and her husband were there, Rachel and Kyle. Um, they oh. they both race. I don't know if you met them. Um, uh, but... This is a bit of a blunder, actually. So. We actually raced it the day before everyone else. Oh, interesting. Because, yeah, we had a little bit of a mishap with the communication about which dates uh, oh. <laughs> the, the thing happened. But they were, they were so helpful and they, oh. they set everything up for us. Uh, so the race was actually to be raced on Sunday, but then we had planned everything for everything to happen on Saturday. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah, we actually voted on Saturdays uh, mm. ourselves, mm-hmm. but uh, it was so amazing anyways. I would love yeah, I heard work. the route was really beautiful. We actually, yeah. um, I was in the Rimini area for uh, after I was at Memory Bike in July and got to ride in that area a little bit. Not not anywhere near where you all did the race, but it, it, that area is very pretty by the beach and everything. It's nice. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And mm. it gets pretty steep pretty fast when you go inland from the from the beaches. <laughs> yes. Yes, it does for sure. Um, but yeah, the Italy is beautiful. Jeez, yeah. I, I just but, need to move there. <laughs> but you you have been have you been, you've been racing on the ultra before or now yes. later, right? Mm-hmm. That's been your go-to bike, kind of, right? Yeah, I've have the I've had actually every three T model uh, at this point now. So mm. um, yeah, the first the Primo, then the Race Max, and when they came out with the Ultra, that was obviously like a very exciting because it could hold wider tires, and so I raced that. Actually, I think that was the bike I raced when I won Unbound XL. Yeah, I believe so. So, it, yeah, that was the debut of that bike. And that it's a really, I mean, it's a great bike. And it's really comfortable for me. The geometry is really nice. It can hold pretty wide tires up, up to 40C. Um, but then there are these races where you just need a little bit more than that. And, or some of the riding I do, honestly. I love, like I mentioned, I love technical terrain. I love things that are hard. I would choose to ride my gravel bike on single track a lot of times depending on where i am and what i'm doing so the extrema just seemed like the the hold in my bike arsenal that i didn't know i had but now that it's filled i'm like okay this is good i have a bike for every single specific type of gravel riding that you you not you might want to do so where do you draw the line then from sort of riding a gravel bike to say let's say a hardtail or a full suspension Mm -hmm. mountain bike then Mm -hmm. so there, there is definitely a fine line in the fact that the bike I'm riding, the Extrema Italia, is not a, it's not a mountain bike. It is for those technical terrain type riding where maybe you're going for a long time, but you don't, you don't need suspension or you, you don't want the suspension creating that lag or that drag. And with the mountain bike, it is more upright. I do have a hardtail that I will race. Uh, so I'll do Atlas Mountain Race with a hardtail because I need that suspension for the kind of riding that's there and then the ability to hold a, a smaller chain ring. So something like a 32 or, or smaller than that. I think those are your two major differences, the front fork and then, yeah, being able to ride an even smaller chain ring. But I mean, honestly, I like a drop bar more, way more than I like a flat bar. Mm. So yeah, there are some races out there that I've considered doing with the Extrema where a lot of people would use, um, a a flat bar just because the position on a flat bar for me and the wrist angles and everything it just not it's not good for me it irritates me after a while oh interesting that's mm-hmm. i mean i i i that's my choice as well any day Same. of the week so mm-hmm. uh, i if, sometimes i sometimes i would like to have an amount of bike again but but uh, 
yeah, I don't know if I would actually take it out when I have mm. something else standing there next mm. to it. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> See, the problem is, is I have a hard tail and I have a, a stump jumper, dual suspension, you know, yeah. 140 fork. So I have every bike you could really want, except I don't have a road bike. Um, but yeah, I definitely, each bike has a time and a place for when I want to ride it. And when I'm riding the stump jumper or, you know, where I just was in Bentonville, there's a lot of really fun things you can do with a hard tail where you just like, couldn't quite with the right gearing get around on a, a drop bar extra metalia for example so mm -hmm. yeah super cool mm -hmm. so let's let's back it up a little bit and just start off how did you find cycling and why cycling in in your life yeah um i have always been an endurance kind of person when i was a kid i was a swimmer and then when i went into high school i started into running and i really liked that actually i needed that i needed that outlet uh, growing up, I needed to have a way to expel energy. And I still to this day, like, if I haven't exercised, you know, <laughs> you don't want to be around me. Um, so I, yeah, I got into running and then went to university and was like, well, I don't really want to run collegiate varsity sports. I just didn't think that was going to work for me. And so I decided I would join a club team. And I was a swimmer, I was a runner, so I decided I would try a triathlon. And um, I did that for a couple of years, but I just really, I mean, I loved it. It was great, but it was it was way too much, way too much, like too many things going on. And I just yeah. really liked riding my bike more. So I started riding more and more and doing less of the racing and triathlon. And then, yeah, I got into road racing and then I was doing some UCI races and some crit races, basically like all the big crit series that we have here in the US. I did that actually with the Velocio Explorer team that I'm on now. Mm -hmm. So I've been with the team since um, 2016. So this wow. is my eighth, yeah, my eighth year. So um, that was my, my road experience was really fun and wonderful, but I kind of got burnt out. And around that time in the US, it was starting to become this thing called gravel that people were doing. I mean, I was riding my road bike where I was living and we had, you know, um, national forests where you could go and ride gravel roads for miles and miles. And I was riding my road bike with 25s and then you could put 28s in your road bike. And that was exciting. Um, rim brakes. Gosh, I still, I laughed to Whoa. this day. I think that like <laughs> I've done so much of that in, uh, like I did BWR in 2015 so long time ago on my road bike with 25s and and Wait, now <laughs> um the san diego one the like uh, the original that's, one that's the og one there. right yeah. yeah the og yeah, yeah. when I, I lived there for some time in san diego and oh, okay, um, gotcha. yeah so i i have done a lot of like crazy things with bikes and got into gravel racing because it was just something different and exciting and i don't know the training it didn't feel like training anymore it just felt like riding my bike and adventure um so that's kind of how I started doing the off-road stuff. I also got a mountain bike around that time, uh, maybe like 2018. Actually, I got uh, hit by a car. I was okay, but I got hit by a car and my very expensive road bike that I had bought for a discounted price, um, you know, working at a bike shop. It was, you know, an S-Works. And so the insurance claimed it out and I was able to buy a mountain bike along with a like a cheaper road bike, basically. Okay. So I started mountain biking at the time and um, that just kind of fueled me into this off-road scene. And then I kept riding longer and then I longer. And then, yeah, during the pandemic, I blame it on Unbound, actually, the, the <laughs> gravel race in the U.S. because I had done the 200, so the regular or the like, you know, marquee event in 2019 before the pandemic. And when I did it, I had a pretty bad experience just like being dumb I had no idea what I was doing I didn't bring salt I just you know I had no idea what I was doing and I was gonna ride for like 12 or more hours um and I finished the race actually I think I got top 15 which was pretty cool now wow. I'd be like I, I don't think I could do that but um I was like I'm never coming back I'm never doing this again you know I swore off of it and then two years later we were getting ready for Unbound again. People were talking about what distance they were doing. And I just didn't want to do the 200. It felt very like who's who, all about the pros. And it just yeah. did, didn't really feel like my scene. And 
I had seen the XL and I had watched them the day before I had raced in 2019 take off. And it's a very special thing where the whole town, everyone is out watching the 350 mile riders take off. And it, it's just, it was inspirational and very exciting. And so um, I convinced Rachel, actually the, the teammate of mine I was telling you about that did Rimini, mm -hmm. I convinced her to do the XL with me. So we both signed up for it and to get ready, I just started riding more. And I, it was like kind of waning pandemic times. So I had a friend, a couple this friends. This is which? 2021? 2020, 2021. Yeah, 2021. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I had a couple friends that were also into the riding for a long time. So we would meet on the weekends and ride like 8, 10, or 12 hours. Um, yeah. And well, getting ready yeah. for this. And I did, I don't know, I did my first overnighter that was 27 hours. It was a ton of mileage and a lot of elevation gain all just to get ready to just do Unbound XL because I didn't want to do the 200. Um, <laughs> and so, yeah, my passion for it all grew from there. And I signed up in the time of getting ready for XL for Badlands. So that's sort of so like... That's actually, so for, for you, for the, for the people that don't know you or don't know about you, um, sure. that you are an endurance athlete, basically, mm -hmm. right? You you are mm -hmm. a ultra athlete. So and was this then your first ultra that you did? Yeah. So, well, I guess the term people always say, well, what does an ultra really mean? I mean, it means yeah, anything yeah, that's okay. over whatever. So um, 24 hours is what I would say is more than an ultra. And yeah, my uh -huh. first one was April 2021 when I did a 24 hour race to get ready for the 350 miles. Gotcha. Um, yeah. So th that was the first time I had ever done anything longer than, I don't know, 12 hours or something. Wow. I, 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 I have such a hard time. And that's why I wanted to talk to you about this as well. Like I, I cannot understand how you're able to put yourself in a state of mind where you ride your bike for that long and you push yourself to those limits that you never knew that you had or beyond them potentially. Right. And just speak to me. How, how is that even possible? Like for a normal person <laughs> like myself that goes for, I mean, my life is completely effed up so i can't go for another more more than like an hour or so because of family mm. and work and everything mm -hmm. um but tell me wh how how are you able to push through how are you able to go beyond 24 hours like mm. talk to me about that well i'm a very competitive person so whether that's against myself or against others i just really want to get to the finish line as fast as possible i've always been competitive i have three older brothers and so i've always had that desire to want to beat the other people that i'm around and i i i really love competition so um i think that's part of why i keep going is there's this competition i was having a conversation recently with somebody where we were talking about you know people doing an fkt mm -hmm. and fastest known time attempt on say a route uh and i don't really think that's for me. I mean, I think they're great and people go and do them. Like that's the kind of thing that a lot of people thrive in, but I need the like competitive atmosphere. I need the race or event where people are together and there's this, um, you know, not necessarily pressure, but there's this, like, you know, that people are out there, you know, people are watching your dot cause they're tracking the race or whatever it might be. Um, so yeah, the competition uh, for me is a huge thing and that keeps me going. And also, uh, I guess for me to be able to keep going and push past what maybe somebody else might not be able to do uh, is a lot of mindset. In the last couple of years, I would say probably maybe like three or three or years or so, I really worked on changing my mindset and my ability to take what's happening and not let it affect me in a negative way. I, for example, was riding with somebody during Badlands earlier this year and it started raining and I didn't even notice that it was raining. But then they they remarked about the fact that it was raining and, you know, we're having a conversation about it. But for me, it's just it's just rain. There's not really anything you can do about it. It's raining for me. It's raining for them. So I just, you know, kind of choose to dissociate from things that might actually be negative things for other people. I try very hard to be positive 
and have a positive attitude because I'm pretty lucky that I get to be out there doing whatever I'm doing, riding my bike or traveling or whatever it might be. Um, nowadays, even when I'm in like a terrible travel day where like it's been 20 hours and I'm not, you know, I'm still traveling. Like, I think, you know what, at least I get to go somewhere. This is really cool that I'm doing this or I'm going whatever. So, um, I, I think- love- <laughs> Positive. I love that uh, yeah. that cool kind of aspect of things. Like that's that's just beyond amazing. But how how did you get to that? Have you done that sort of? Is that an internal journey of yours, or have you learned? Have you read books or listened to podcasts? What, what has been your source of inspiration to to changing that mindset or getting getting into that mindset? You know, I think I've been around people in my life who have been negative, and I've also been around people who have been positive, and I've always dr- been drawn towards the positive people. And I've always been deeply affected by other people's emotions. And Mm -hmm. so having somebody that's negative around me has always been very detrimental to my psyche. And it still is that way today, but I try really hard to, to stay positive. And I've learned from other people, um, that are, that are positive. Um, my ex-husband actually is a very positive person. And really for most of my twenties, I learned from him that, you know, things may suck, but you know what, you can push through, you know, it's not the end of the world. And, um, you know, I think seeing other people be positive really is kind of what sparked me to be like, I also want to be this person. I I don't want to be bringing other people down yeah, sure. We all have our bad days. You know, you can't be perfect. But I do really think that um, if you can be positive, it will also help others, especially like in a race atmosphere. There's nothing like when you come upon somebody or somebody comes upon you and is like, man, this is shit. And you're like, but I'm having a good time. So leave me alone, you know? <laughs> um, so it, it is a it is a like a, a skill that I've I still actively work on. I can't say that it's perfect. Um, but yeah, it, it's a mindset that I just choose. And if I catch myself feeling negative, I'm like, stop, don't do that. Get yourself in a better mindset, you know. So. I, I I try to do what you were talking about as well uh, myself. And I think to some extent what you just said now in the end, that it is a choice. <laughs> I, I so believe in that too, that you can actually choose if you want to be happy, if you want to mm-hmm. be sad or however you want to feel. Of course, you can always have those things affecting you. That's the outside factors. Sure. But eventually, it's, the choice is yours. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think yeah. that's that's something that is so important for people that or that they should take with them from from what you're saying now. I mm-hmm. think that's such a beautiful thing. Yeah. Um, I- but but speaking about about the racing situations if had it happened that when you've been out um on any kind any kind of race i mean you you get pretty lonely i guess but has there been any any situations first and foremost where there has been people that's been around you then that has had this negativity and what have how how have you dealt with it have you tried to just push through and, and get rid of them or what what situation has that happened even definitely i've been around people who have been you know man, this is terrible, or I'm having a bad time or, you know, um, and we, I think we all do get a pass every once in a while. Sometimes shit just sucks. <laughs> Sometimes mm-hmm. things yeah. are just really not going your way. Maybe you crashed or maybe you have a really bad saddle sore and it's impossible to sit on your, your saddle. Mm-hmm. There are a, a ton of things that could happen in the middle of a race. I think, um, when you have somebody near you though that's like that i usually just either don't speak or i'm just so positive back (laughs) that they probably get really annoyed with me and are like i gotta get away from this person (laughs) um but i have had people tell me after races that um have ridden around me or been around me that said you know thank you so much for being so positive uh it actually helped me see that you know things actually weren't that bad or just like they appreciate the positivity that's such a fantastic thing to hear right you how how do you feel when people say that um i just you know it makes me smile and it also it means that what i'm doing and how i'm acting is obviously affecting others so if i can be a positive person for one person that's great but you know however many people are impacted that's amazing it's all about you know choosing to be positive and sharing that with everyone 
Do you think about that as well from from sort of from a distance, like not only affecting people that's in the race per se next to you racing, but also people that that see you and what you do on on Instagram and other channels that you that you that you mm-hmm. sort of expose yourself in? How, is yeah. that sort of an ambition, or is, are you just doing that sort of naturally? Um, I think yeah, I think it's important to be positive as often as possible. Uh, I do think. The internet is a weird place. It's so hard. You know, life is messy for many people. It's it's not cut and dry. For most of my life, actually, I've had a pretty, pretty simple life until this actually this last year I've been going through. Um, I, I went I got divorced. I was dealing with a ton of like things. I moved. I've been, you know, not homeless, but I've been living in a bunch of different places. And it's been a really hard year for me. Mm. Um, and it's not something that like I'm I'm sharing on the internet because I think, um, I don't know, people are not necessarily coming to me because they want to know about my personal problems. But I have with people that I know uh, or or people that I've had conversations with that I don't know on the internet. And like, they're like, hey, how you doing? I see that your surname changed or, you know, I'm open with people about it, um, about things that have been going wrong or have been challenges. Um, and, you know, I think it is important for people to know that we're not, I'm not a robot, you know, I'm over here, like, I didn't finish a race earlier this year. And, you know, maybe I cried my eyes out 17 times in the last month or two months or whatever, you know, it's just like, life is really, it's a, it's a messy thing. And it's hard to share that with the world on the internet. Um, I think it is important, but it is definitely a, it's a weird place because some people want to know and some, some people don't want to know, but being, being authentic, I think is super important. Um, Mm. and that's so hard to find. I mean, it's super hard to be authentic on the internet because it's like, well, I could tell you about the fact that I rode in the rain for four, four hours or five hours on Sunday, or I could show you these cool pictures and I just show you pictures. (laughs) Yeah. We all know what, what gets the likes in the end, Mm. right? It's Mm. uh, not always, um, the sad stories mm-hmm. and I, I can totally relate i don't know if you know but i'm, I'm also divorced now mm. i'm i'm married again but uh, i have a pretty dark past as well when mm. it comes to relationships and, and going through dark places in life but i'm cycling helped Cycl- it cycling helps cycling. so much it helps cycling so put me much in a place in a place where i never ever thought that i would ever be able to be mm. so yeah that's I'm, wonderful truly grateful for for cycling and also the community mm-hmm. of cyclists in general like how open-minded and open and friendly everyone has been just welcoming you um, mm-hmm. as a cyclist to to yeah. new cities to new places to new clubs to 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 new races that i've mm-hmm. yeah and just being able to speak to you today is, is one of those things as well that's just yeah really really awesome definitely i think uh, the cycling world is really beautiful it's such uh, a special yeah. place yeah it is it mm. is mm-hmm. um let's just change gears for for a bit and just come back to to your uh, instagram handle <laughs> the, the what wagon or not the what wagon, it's the what wagon straight up yeah just like, what wagon what, how, tell me the, what the story there must be some kind of backstory to to this name you know in when Instagram was not, it was still like such a new thing. You know, we we were like cropping things and putting hideous filters on photos. Like it was that <laughs> time. And um, my ex-husband was like, you know what? You need a cool name. What about Wah Wagon? And it was just like, well, yeah, that sounds like a great idea. And people made fun of me at, for it at first. But it was, I had, I had like 300 followers or something. I mean, like this was many, many years ago, like 2013 or 14. Um, and so, yeah, I just changed my name to be that. And, uh, I actually think I actively chose to have an underscore for there Mm -hmm. because I'm pretty sure the, um, the other option was available that Watt Wagon without it was there, but it made more sense with the underscore. So I went with it and just, yeah, kind of, I've had it for 10 years and now it's sort of my identity, which is kind of funny that people don't even know my name sometimes and they just say it's wall wagon <laughs> or people call me wagon too that's also a a, a nickname that people go for oh really yeah wagon mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah so i i hope uh, i hope meet people mean it in a in a in a good sense and uh, that's not something no i think i think it's a nice way to abbreviate it without saying cynthia which is you know but um i love it i think it's great i mean it's definitely now in the last couple years i've kind of like tried to brand it 
and do all of the things with that. But at first it was literally just like a funny Instagram name. It was nothing like I was never like, oh, I'm going to be an influencer with this cool Instagram name because I don't think influencers <laughs> existed 10 years ago. Or if they did, it was blog blog people, you know, it was a exactly. different thing. Ex- so. Exactly. The blog people. I love yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> how... how- um you you spoke about the team earlier right and it mm-hmm. used to be a road racing team then as i understand mm-hmm. it or crit racing team but and, and now the team has basically transitioned now to only mm-hmm. doing gravel races as mm-hmm. i understand it no mm-hmm. yeah so in 2018 at the end of the year i was burnt out on road racing i was not going to continue and the owner of the team her name is britley bowman lives in new york city really wonderful person one of my best friends she owns the team and was also feeling kind of burnout and everyone on the team was like kind of leaving going to do other stuff um so it was just her and i really and we were kind of like what do we do this is weird um not sure if we wanted to try and bring on a bunch of new riders to do road and i was like you know what gravel racing is like kind of becoming cool like we should just become a gravel team and she was like yeah that's the only way i can move forward i don't think i can race you know crits again um and so we swapped to be a gravel team and all of our sponsors at the time continued and we picked up open bikes as our bike um for the year and yeah we did a full season of gravel in 2019 more like local races because at that point we didn't really have that many bigger gravel races like we do now that are like you know national level type things um so yeah since 2019 it's been it's been gravel and each year we've had about eight or nine people on the team wow that's yeah that's a pretty big for being a gravel team i mean there's now smaller teams starting and there's mm-hmm. like sets of two sets of four people kind of teams but that's a fairly big gravel team it is and you know i think our team is not just like we're not doing you know next year the team will have one rider doing the lifetime grand prix and then you know you've got each each rider has a you know a different place on the team we have community builders we have you know race promoter uh in the past year you know that was me or ultra riding that was me or you know we have we have different um players on the team that do different things and so i think that that is major thing that a sponsor, you know, a team sponsor really likes is that we're not just a racing team. We're like everything We're we've got lifestyle riders. uh, We've got community, you know, we've got all the, all the types of riders that, that there are. I think from, from a brand uh, partnership perspective, I I think that's what many people search for because Mm -hmm. they need, they need all the, the aspects of of the bandwidth and the spectrum for people to be able to relate to. So I think Mm -hmm. that's, that's smart. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. And it's all women. I mean, like, what else could you ask for? You know, like, exactly. literally, <laughs> it's a it's a good it's a wonderful team. Um, Actually, this is so I've been on the team for eight years. Uh, and I'm actually this is the lot the, my last season with the team. I'm starting my own program going into 2024. So it's very oh, wow. new. I haven't I will um make an announcement in the next couple of weeks about it. But yeah, it's very it's new and it's exciting. Um, so going full of, privateer now then or yeah definitely um wow, full privateer <laughs> yeah it's a little it's been a it's been a process it's it's definitely um been challenging uh but yeah. I've, I've helped run the the velocio exploro team i've been the assistant manager so i've kind of the last few years been pretty um i've learned a ton on how to deal with um negotiations and you know this and that and like how to organize things and yeah um the team owner Britley has has been a a huge help and a mentor to me so i feel ready to go into my own privateer kind of thing well that's super cool i congrats uh, thank you today, then. that's that's a thank huge you. use that you yeah. put in here on the yeah on the <laughs> yeah. Wow. yeah so it's Very i don't know exciting. i don't i'm gonna call it uh just you know maybe it's cynthia but uh wah wagon the wall wagon program going forward <laughs> of course that's the best uh, best name ever i love it yeah thank you but i was gonna ask you about the lifetime grand prix actually uh mm. if that ever crossed your mind now there's now it's the third season there or it's the mm-hmm. third year they're starting now right did yeah, you, this did is you ever consider it or um you know i i could do it but i would probably be like 20th place or something like that and mm-hmm. i mean those women doing those races are the the women in the top 10 are and i mean all of them impressive athletes and yeah. i commend them for it but that kind of racing is not the style of racing that i enjoy doing i also 
don't think I am as I'm, I'm definitely an endurance athlete. I don't feel mm-hmm. warmed up until I'm a hundred miles in, you know, I'm <laughs> like, I would, you know, I would be like, can we do that lap five more times? And then I'll, then I'll be at the finish first or whatever. Um, I, I really like the adventure side of riding bikes and the lifetime Grand Prix, although it is adventurous um, in its own way, it's too short and it's just not my style of racing these days. I've done all of that. And yeah, I'm, I'm definitely like, I want to go somewhere new or experience something I've never done before and push myself past, you know, what my zone five, you know, okay. I can do zone five for 30 seconds, but you know, I want to see what I can do at zone three for seven days or whatever. Yeah. 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 No, I, I understand that it's a, it's a different sort of, yeah, it's a different kind of athlete in that sense. Um, mm-hmm. but, but speaking about being an athlete, you're not, I'm not an average athlete. I just, <laughs> I just looked at your Instagram now before, um, and the last, not the last post that you did, but one of the last posts. You 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 summarized your year kind of nine mm-hmm. races, mm-hmm. two thousand three hundred and seventy miles raced. That's yeah, that's quite an average for nine <laughs> races, huh? <laughs> that's insane. It's a lot. Forty flights, forty four states, four countries, and we're going to get back to that in a little bit. Uh, one race production, and um, one DNF. We might need mm-hmm. to talk about that too. Mm-hmm. Um, five races with your teammates. 175 what's how do you pronounce it huma it's a huma is a gel it's a company uh, an american gel company ah uh, got you mm-hmm. <laughs> three new three t bikes we like that mm-hmm. and one <laughs> new hardtail yeah and you 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 first you came in first in trans cordelias mm-hmm. uh, 11th mid-south that's a pretty tough competition race um grand how do you pronounce that grand grand guanche no, Grand Guanche. Oh yeah, Grand yeah, Guanche is um yep, that's a ultra on the Canary Islands. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Pretty chunky as well. Then you mm-hmm. came first there. Mm-hmm. Uh Rasput I can't even Rasputitza. say it. Rasputitza. It's Rasputitza. A, it's Dirt. a gravel it's a shorter gravel race. Mm-hmm. You came in fifth, then unbound. You DNF this year. You that was the XL as well, right? No? Yeah, that was in the XL. Mm-hmm. Uh, memory bike, you came in first. Badlands, that's a huge race here in the Euro- in Europe. First, mm-hmm. Jeroboam, that's a that, uh, celebration kind of mm-hmm. emoji you had there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I did. I and finished the-, the first in my distance, but they don't call it a race, so I'm just gonna no, say that it's exactly. a party. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but and you did the full jeroboam right the 300 okay. um actually i only did the um the the half the 150 um, 150, 150 yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. that's okay that's okay i was dealing with some knee things i was also on this new bike and i was like i don't think i want to ride 300k on a new bike yeah you know i need to get used to it so i did the, yeah, the half sense. yeah so that that was that was last year impressive impressive a lot of a lot of wins um that's that's crazy and but how what's do you can you spill any beans on your race program for next year what's your plan um yeah i'm doing i'll i'll sell a couple things because i haven't announced it yet but i'm doing um alice mountain race which is pretty well known i've i've been planning on that i was planning on doing it last year and then i was get, supposed to get a hardtail and it didn't come in all these things so i didn't end up racing it so yeah well, this year um atlas mountain race and um there let's see i'm doing the traca um the 560 which is i'm super excited that there's a 560 the 360 is a great distance but I am definitely more, you know, in the the ultra endurance side of things. So I think I'll enjoy the longer one. Um, I'm doing El Piri, which is a um, newer, I think this is the first year ultra. It's actually, again, it's in Spain. I feel like I've raced so many times in Spain, Um, but it's in the Pyrenees. I think it starts in Girona and then you ride over in Pyrenees. It's a gravel race in um, June and then a surprise one in July. And... um, one in um, Arkansas in October. It's a it's a smaller race, but it it's called Arkansas High Country, and um, mm-hmm. it's where I'll be living. So, kind of um, nice to do an American race and be mm-hmm. close to home. Very cool. So mm-hmm. again, you're going to be traveling quite a lot mm-hmm. and spending mm-hmm. some time in, in Europe. Yes. Um, yeah. what, how do you how do you feel? What's what's the big difference between racing in Europe and and uh, and, and the US? Is there any differences? Yeah, absolutely. I love racing in Europe. I like it because it's more competitive. No, 
no no like um american racing is in ultra world is different um it's much more like um it's not necessarily event based there are a lot of these grand apart style races where they people gather together and they start but it's not an organized event and that's great i think that there needs to be those things it's less pressure for people um less barrier to entry because there's not usually a cost but i personally like the event style because i like the competition i want to um feel like i'm in a community with other people and so the events in europe and actually a lot of them in south america are like this as well there's like a you know start line and then there's a finishers party or whatever it might be um but i enjoy racing in europe i think that The races there, they have more shorter distance races, which I'm much better. I know that sounds funny because I'm like, oh, I I need it to be longer. But I actually, I I do prefer like a 48 to 72 hour time frame of racing where American racing for ultras is much longer. There are like five, 10, 14, 20 day races that are depending on which one you do. Mm. Um, And those are, they're great, but they take a lot of time to train for and they do take a lot of time to recover so if you're like me trying to do racing as as kind of like a i don't know if profession is the right word but you know the number of races that you can do um the less the less races you can do the less you can like show what you've done so you know if you can only do two 20 or two two weekday races in a year then that's kind of a it just is not, it's not the best. So I, I would like to do five shorter races, essentially. Um, so European racing is, and it's also, I've been to the U.S. I've been to a lot of places in the U.S. I'm like if I want to go and travel somewhere, I might as well go somewhere I've never been. So that's, that's how I see it when I think about what races I want to do and where I want to go. Cool. Do you speak in any in other languages? Than language? I don't. I'm, I'm terrible. Um, I took French for a really long time, basically like 10 years. And I literally don't know. I don't know how I got past the test and whatever. <laughs> I can't speak it. Um, I actually probably feel like I know more Spanish than I know French. Um, I've been trying really hard to learn it because I've spent a lot of time in South America and, and in Spain at this point. But um I get really going on it and then I'm like, I forget, I don't do my Duolingo. And then it's like been a couple months and I'm like, ah, shoot, you know, kind of going back to square two. And so, yeah. <clears throat> coming, back to, coming back to race situations, has there been any, when you've been in South America or in Spain on those races, when you stop at sort of any kind of, uh, I don't know, petrol station to get some, some, something to drink or to eat or anything? Has it been, there been any situations where sort of you, you had, there has been a language barrier? Yes. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, I can think of one in, uh, now I, now, especially in Spain, like I know how to operate in Spain. I, mm-hmm. I can, I, I can figure out and tell people what I want. Um, but I was in Chile for cross Andes last year and I was in the, this pizza place and I've, I've since learned, I don't actually need like full on real food. I can for 24 or 48 hour raises, I can eat like junk food basically but I, I thought at the time I needed like pizza and french fries and so I went and tried to buy pizza and french fries at this shop and they <laughs> were taking forever and they finally handed me what was just french fries and I didn't get the pizza and I actually had like a, a pretty much a mental breakdown inside the store at literally the there was a videographer there like filming me crying because I didn't get this food that I thought I had ordered uh so yeah it's definitely it's it's a challenge but also um like using the phone apps to translate is very helpful as well oh yeah i've definitely gotten better at doing that and being like speak here or you know whatever um yeah, so yeah. that's helpful yeah, of course mm-hmm. so doing all these long races and putting in the hours to train for them what do you do in the spare time what, how do you enjoy your life off the bike hmm. Um, I love driving my bike for a long time, but I also love not riding my bike. Um, I 
it's funny now that you asked me what I do in my spare time. I'm like, I don't know what I do in my spare time. <laughs> I really love to be around people. Um, so whether that's just hanging out, maybe cooking dinner with friends or, um, you know, I'm not really much of a, uh, I can't sit for a long time, which is funny because I spend a lot of time at my computer, but I'm actively using my brain and I'm working. Mm -hmm. But for me, it's really hard to sit and watch television or go to the movies or anything like that. So I feel like I always have to be doing something, going somewhere. Um, and I really thrive on being around other people. I get energy from it. So, you know, going out to dinner, um, doing, you know, riding around the block or going for a walk. I enjoy, you know, just like things, simple things like that. Yeah. Um, so those are my, in my free time, but, uh, I guess in my not free time, but not riding time, um, in the, the last couple of years, I have, um, started my own videography business. So I do wedding videography and I started a YouTube channel. So that's kind of like dominating my time off the bike. Um, it takes a lot of effort to do that and grow that. Um, but, You're really yeah. good at it. The stuff that I've seen <laughs> looks really, really good. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. It is hard work. I'll tell you that. Mm. It's not easy, but um, but it's worth it, I think, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. What, um, so you spoke a little bit about your program for next year, but are there any things sort of left or that you have on your bucket list? Is there any besides just races? Is there any adventures that you would like to do? Any... Mm. Um, you know, I'm, I've kind of been in this life changing time and where I'm like, I'm not sure where I wanted to live. I was actually considering like, maybe I moved to Europe. Um, I think I would like to move to Europe at some point and experience life there. I just, I want, I feel like life has so much to give and I want everything. I want to see everything. I want to go in everywhere. I want to experience all kinds of things. And so I think for now, you know, I focus on racing. But mm. when racing is over or when I feel like I've I've fi I've filled that or checked that box, um, maybe I'll still do ultras and stuff. But um, I'll always ride my bike. That is until I can't ride a bike. Um, but I like the idea of doing a long term, long distance tour. So, um, you know, like multi multi month, um, not necessarily a year, but yeah, I have the ideas of like spending a lot of time on a bike with somebody that's close to me, just experiencing things and, um, slowing down because I spend a lot of time racing fast and I'm not really getting to experience everything where I'm racing. I'm oftentimes not able to have that conversation with somebody at a shop because I have to run. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I like the idea of at some point slowing down, but I don't know if I'll ever slow down. I'm not really somebody to, <laughs> to do things slowly. I, I run up the stairs fast. I, I run d down the stairs fast. Like I'm not really a person to be, uh, slowing down. Um, but maybe one day. <laughs> what What's the most annoying thing with you, Cynthia? Like the thing that annoys me the most or the, no, the, the most annoying thing with you? Oh, um, probably <laughs> I'm. Uh, two things. I, when I'm really hungry, you don't want to be around me. I know I said earlier when I'm really tired or not really tired, when I haven't exercised, you don't want to be around me. Um, but if I haven't eaten, then steer clear. I'm definitely, I've gotten better as I've gotten older, but, um, yeah, I'm definitely a, I have to eat. I can be kind of mean. Well, the whole I, hangry kind of thing. Then. Yeah. Um, but I also, I would say I, I, I'm a stomper. I'm like all over the house. People tell me I walk loud and I'm like, mm -hmm. really? I had no idea. It's genetic though, because I, my dad and my brother, they both do it too. So, so like so. really walking on your heels kind of thing or where, um, yeah, I guess I just like, my footsteps are just very heavy. Like I'm not lightly stepping. I'm putting my okay. full foot down and smacking the ground. Uh, so when I'm going up and down the stairs really fast, it's really loud. <laughs> Uh, what about you? Yeah. What's your what is yeah. it? What people say about you? My most annoying things about me. Oh my! Oh my God! The list is so long. I don't know we, we, how long do we have now. <laughs> mm. Give me give me one good one or two. Um, I think oh, it's it's a really hard question. I don't now know I how put, you, you, you put me so on fast. the spot. I'm putting you on <laughs> you the spot. You put me on the spot now, huh? Uh. <laughs> Uh, um i would say most annoying thing about me oh my god i think i'm probably um 
Do you oh, leave the God. dishes out or? Um... No, I don't. I'm the, maybe I'm the actually opposite of that. Oh, you're, you're like I, too intense. Oh, that would be yeah, great. Yeah, yeah, that, exactly. that's, I, that's wonderful. No, that's not that's, an annoying that's thing. Actually I appreciate it. You you take the cup out of someone's hand as they're drinking it. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, now now I know what my wife usually she nags about that I I <laughs> I eat too fast. Oh, okay. And, yeah, so she and it's not that she eats slow; it's just that I, I eat very fast. So then mm-hmm. I sort of I have to sit there and wait for her to eat, and that <laughs> gets a little bit awkward like that, you know. And then as soon as she puts her fork down, or <laughs> you're like, okay, let's go. <laughs> 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 Oh, yeah, so, so that's funny. kind of the person that I am. Mm. So if you don't enjoy that, I'm truly grateful that my wife accepts those flaws oh. or sort of mm-hmm. back spots. Mm. I, usually, I, this, even the sun has spots, right? So that's right. We're all, we all we're have all our cute. things. Yeah. We all have our weird things. It's, <laughs> you can't avoid it. No, we can't be robots. That's what no. makes us who we are, you know? Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Um. What's if you were to give any advice to to folks like myself? Not not that I think that I would get into ultra because I don't think that I would be able to. I would probably mm. not die, but I would have a very hard time. But people, if they are interested, what like you got into it and you've been in it in a couple of years now, right? Mm-hmm. Do you have any beginner's mistake that you should try to avoid or mm. trying to think that you should focus on or any mm. any advice? Um. I think. I think a couple things. I remember when I, uh, before I started really doing it, I wanted to go bikepacking. And I had a good friend um, where I was living named Pearson. And he, um, he was kind of ahead of me in the process of he had all the bags and he had done some tours and things um, and always offered to lend me things. But I just, every time I would like get ready to do it, I would just get so overwhelmed by it. I just couldn't, I was like, I just, I can't, that's scary. Um, And so I think some people, the idea of the overnight situation seems kind of scary. A lot of people have a hard time riding at night in the dark. Um, So if that's not your thing, don't ride at night in the dark. Literally choose to ride during the day. Um, The other thing about it is if you are scared, um, start out where you don't actually spend the night anywhere. You go and you ride until two or three in the morning. Um, and then you go back home and sleep in your own bed. And I think that's a good way to get into like overnight or nighttime riding. Um, do it with a friend always. I think that riding with friends is, if you can't find a friend or a pal to go out with, like that's okay. But in the long run, you'll have a lot more fun if you can do it with another person. Um, so yeah, doing it with other friends. I, I think my biggest suggestion to people though is if you're gonna do a race and you have interest in it, make sure you know how your electronics work and you have practiced riding with your setup. So many people will get something new and try it on race day or whatever. And that's just not, it's not a good idea. Um, Like Mm. you don't want to go out and like realize that the lights that you thought said, online that they would last this amount of time don't last that amount of time so um yeah keeping a like a um a, a like knowing just knowing how much things that, uh, that you're using last and how they work and how they fit in your bike bags and so basically like recon recon of your stuff um and try an overnighter if you can before you do a race um, those are, yeah, those are my biggest suggestions and be positive because you're out riding your bike. You know, if you're not having fun, why are you out there? Exactly. So. Mm-hmm. That's, that's perfect mm. way to end this, uh, yeah. with the pos- on the positive note. So mm-hmm. thank you. this has been a total blast. I- yeah, I'm super happy to speak to you and to mm. learn so much about yourself and you being mm. so honest and transparent and open with everything. So thank you very much for coming yeah. on board and, uh, yeah, happy to have you. Thank you so much. Have a great afternoon. Actually, it's nighttime for you. So have a great evening. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. Uh Bye. Holy moly, Cynthia. I am beyond impressed. Just as I said earlier, I cannot understand how you're able to push yourself to go through those long races and to even come out on top. I'm so ever grateful, thankful for that you spent your time with me on this podcast to talk to my listeners about all the things that you've gone through in life 
and the positive attitude and how important isn't that so thank you for sharing what do you think about mindset how important is it for being able to pull through things let me know in the comments below and be sure to hit that subscribe and like button so thank you guys for joining and i'll see you all next time bye bye